All right guys, today we're gonna tackle an American institution. We're gonna visit what is probably the most famous and most popular burger in the history of all American hamburgers. If you live here, and probably if you've lived anywhere with any sort of semblance, semblance of modern society, you have heard of the Big Mac. Now here we have both the Little Mac and the Big Mac. First off, you notice the sesame seed bun. It's an absolute must have for the Big Mac. You absolutely cannot have a Big Mac without a sesame seed bun. Looking under the hood here, we have just enough lettuce to be insulting. I mean, look at the here is the burger patty. I believe these weigh in at roughly two ounces and under the patty crumbling under its own dryness, we have a smidge of Big Mac sauce, two very sad looking pickles, the other six pieces of shredded lettuce and a center glob of sauce. Next, you have the toasted bun, which is an earmark of the Big Mac. The bottom is basically the same thing. It's disproportionately loaded and a piece of American cheese. This sandwich is oozing with pride of craftsmanship. I can't imagine anyone being more proud of the work they put into this particular sandwich. And also, you can't have a Big Mac without having fries. And if there's anything McDonald's does right, it is their french fries. Now the first thing you're gonna do is probably the most crucial thing. Wash your friggin' potatoes, dude. Seriously. Dirty food has gotten us in enough trouble. Clean your sh Next thing we're gonna do is square up these potatoes. Leaving a hint of skin is cool, but McDonald's fries rarely have any. So if we're gonna go for perfect matches, clean it up, square it up. Now, there are definitely safer ways to do this, but uh, I've been quarantined for like a month and a half and I'm feeling adventurous. For real though, don't be a dumbass. Safety first. Now after you have a good rectangle to work off of, you want to slice them as evenly as possible into fries. You want the shapes to be as close to uniform as possible, which may require some extra trimming. My rectangle here is a little wonky, so I'm definitely going to have to put that extra work in. And this, my friends, is where you should end up. You can tell that they're really starting to come together. They're starting to look like McDonald's fries. And there's a couple of things that McDonald's does now, secrets if you will, that are going to take their fries to that next level. So what you're going to want to do next is you're going to want to soak them in a cold water bath. You're going to want to do that for about 10 minutes or so. It gives the starch time to come all the way off the potatoes and it's going to really improve the crunchiness of that outside later. Uh, you'll notice the water gets super cloudy. That's just that starch. It's nothing to worry about. But you do want to make sure that your fries are fully submerged here. Now after soaking them, you're going to want to put them on a paper towel lined baking sheet to dry off. And go ahead and pat them dry too. You really want to get as much moisture off here as possible at this point. Set them off to the side and let's hop over to our Big Mac sauce. Now get yourself a mixing bowl and you're going to want to toss in about a cup of mayo, roughly half a cup of sweet pickle relish and about one fourth cup yellow mustard. From here we're going to jump into the aromatics with about two tablespoons of onion powder, granulated garlic, and smoked paprika. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and mix this together until we get a uniform color. You just want it to be a solid color that looks like Big Mac sauce. You're also gonna to need to make sure that you're tasting this and adjust your ingredients to your liking. This recipe should get you pretty close, but depending on your brands and such, you might need to adjust a little bit. Speaking of adjustments, I decided to take my Ghetto Fabulous Sugar Bowl and drop a tablespoon of sugar in as well. Now this step is extremely important. It's absolutely necessary. You're going to want to hop back to your fries where you want to boil some water, toss in a half a cup of sugar, and then we're going to drop in a half a cup of corn syrup. I know it seems weird, but trust me here, stick with me. Get that corn syrup and that water. Bring it up to a boil. Once your water is boiling, you want to shut off your burner. You'll want to reach over, grab a handful of those sultry looking fries, and drop them down in your hot water, sugar, corn syrup mixture. Once you get all of them in, 
Go ahead and throw a lid on top and let it soak for about 10 minutes in the water mixture. Again, this step is imperative. If you want your fries to match McDonald's in flavors and crispiness, you have to do this. Do not skip it. Next, we're gonna get to our buns. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail on these in this video. These are basically the buns from my best buns ever video. I'll have it linked below. The only difference is we went ahead and butter washed them and hit them with the most necessary sesame seed. You absolutely cannot have an MF Big Mac without those little morsels dropped on top. These mostly look fantastic except for the middle front one. It got a little too saucy at the party and let a little too much hang out. But we're going to go ahead and throw it in an Uber and make sure it gets home safe. Now that we have our buns prepped, it's time to hop back over to the fries. Again, you'll want to put them on a paper towel lined baking sheet and pat them dry. Yes, I know, it's going to cost you some paper towels in tumultuous times. But this is really easy and it's very important. You don't want to drop a mega wet fry into your grease unless you think first degree burns and maybe losing your house are pretty dope. Now it's time to blanch your fries. If you've never made fries before, this is the most important part of an even cook. You want to drop your fries into oil heated to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We're not going to do a full cook here, we're only cooking them about 3 minutes. This will allow the fry to cook more evenly when we do the full cook in a few minutes and make that crispy outside of the fry come into fruition, welcoming you to a world of satisfaction and deep fried wonder. You could skip this step, but if you do, I don't want to be your friend. And now that we've sufficiently blanched our fries, we're going to set them on a cooling rack, hit them with a generous portion of kosher salt, and let them hang out for a bit. Yes, we're going to use more paper towels here. By the way, this video is sponsored by Brownie. Brownie? Brownie? The quicker picker upper. JK, I got these at Costco. But let's hop over to our buns. This is pretty self-explanatory. We shouldn't need to go into a whole lot of detail on this. Be careful not to burn them. Don't forget to get one of your buns so that you have that double heel in the middle. And once you have them toasted, pull them on off, and finally we'll get to the burger. Now we're gonna upgrade our beef quality from that sawdust McDonald's uses to Australian Wagyu. And we're gonna jump from a two ounce patty to a four ounce patty. Get your grill, cast iron, flat top, or whatever you're using piping hot and get to business. We're gonna smash these burgers pretty thin and try to get that smash burger crust on them. Now make sure that you're seasoning your burgers. I'm gonna use my AP seasoning, but if you can't get your hands on that, salt and pepper are never a bad option with beef. When you cook your burgers how we're doing it, you want to make sure that you get the seasoning on before the crust forms. Once there's a crust, there will be no seasoning that gets into the meat. So make sure you get it while it's still malleable on the outside. Now here is where we actually cook our fries. You want to get your grease up to about 350 degrees and drop your fries back down for about 7 minutes. Now this is a perfect illustration of why you never overfill your grease. If you do that, all that moisture locked in those potatoes, it's gonna spill right over the top. You're gonna have a burns, fire, whatever. Don't overfill it. Now at the end of your seven minutes, your french fries should come out looking like the most pristine batch of fries you've ever seen in your life. Let them drip then transfer them to a cooling rack where again we're going to allow them to drain on a paper towel. Now the most important step of these french fries is to salt them. For real, knock all this health crap off. You're about to stuff your face with deep fried starch sugar sticks that you've already soaked in sugar and corn syrup water. Don't be bashful with the salt. Now while you let the, your fries cook you might as well dress this burger. Hit it with the sexy little dollop of your Big Mac sauce, some chopped lettuce, some chopped onion, and because we want to taste it, some of those big boy pickles, the first of two Wagyu burgers, a slice of American cheese. Now I know that they don't melt it at all, but I want a little bit of melt on mine, so I'm gonna go ahead and work it over with my torch. Just enough to really get that cheese to kind of droop and settle down into the meat. Now we're going to drop that middle bun, and when you get to the middle bun, 
you know you gotta have some more sauce. With more sauce comes a little more MF lettuce, some more MF onion, a saucy knuckle for the homies who know what's up, and two more of those double D pickles. Don't think we forgot. Of course, you need to drop one more burger on top. We're gonna hit it with one more piece of American cheese, which I'm also gonna work over with this torch. And then last, but not least, it's time to top it off with that bun. And if you look at this burger and don't think it looks like a beauty, I do not know what to tell you. Guys, this is my Big Mac. This is the actual Big Mac. You tell me which one you think is more visually appealing. Of course, I'm gonna start off with a couple fries. Yeah, these are taste exactly like McDonald's fries. What you get is the best thing on the whole menu. They, when they nail the fries, they nail the freaking fries. It's good. Now, I gotta figure out how to get a bite of this bad boy. You gotta bite it off in sections. Man, guys, it's actually too big. It's too big of a sandwich, but it tastes wonderful. It's, uh, first off, the pickles are a huge upgrade. The sauce is pretty close. The burgers are phenomenal. And of course, the bun is a much better high quality bun. It really is. Um, it's a great burger. If you're a Big Mac fan, you're probably gonna love this. If you're not a Big Mac fan, you might still love it. It's not really that hard to make. You might as well give it a shot. And if you like this video, if you were partially entertained, uh, if you wanna see me win at more challenges that I give myself in the future, uh, go ahead, like, subscribe, leave a comment, a little something. That all goes a long way. See you next week.